Colegio Bridges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and roll call. All right, Gaggy. Scott Gardner. Captain Cunningham. I proceed to approve meeting minutes from the Warsaw meeting from March 13, 2023. The only correction I have is in public comment. Lions, Lions Park is spelled L I O N S, no apostrophe. Any other items? Make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for 313.23 with that correction. Second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Under item D, which is public comment, is there anybody here from public that wishes to speak tonight? I have a couple questions, Sean Peterson. Um, item number 10, we were talking about Connecticut General Statutes 8.2. Yes. Which section of that are you talking about? Um, that's the last section of that. 8.2E. Okay. Now that is to bypass planning and zoning regulations for the town? Is Correct. That right? For town owned properties. Why do you feel that the town shouldn't have to go well, to okay. I, I appreciate your questions on this one, but when we get into that section, we can do that. You're going to talk at that point? Well, um, well we're going to go through the meeting. Why, why, is there something in particular you have a question on that? My, my, my feeling is the town is no better than any other taxpayers. If the taxpayers have to go through planning and zoning, the town should also. That's all. You're no better than us. That's your opinion? That's my opinion. Anything else to say? At this point. Okay. Well, that, this is public comment, so this is where you would say it. Yeah, I understand. Okay. We'll be entertaining that, you know, discussion with Mr. Peterson. No. I think that perhaps that we're no. a building. No. Because Mr. Peterson has an opportunity to speak at this point. He has all the, he's, he already knows what, what we're talking about, so if he wants to talk about it now, that's fine. Well, I've already said my piece. I feel that you, you know, should, you should be responsible for the plan. I don't want to go back and forth with, with public well, understand. Yep. I'm just thinking as a, as a past member of the and zoning, mm -hmm. he might have some value in the that. Yep. Unfortunately, this is why I'm at it. I'm sorry, Mr. Peterson. I said, unfortunately, this is when I can add it. So. Okay. Any other public member of the public wishes to speak? Hearing none, we go into old business and we do not have anything updated from us for this time for the item aquatic invasive species control grant program. We are still waiting for them to bring forth a uh, documentation to help us out to go to the next step. So I would entertain a motion to continue. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Hopefully we'll have it by the next meeting. Um, item F, new business, which is considered an act on tax refunds as requested by the tax collector, totaling $1,016.06. And then for all, for $31.70, Toyota Lease Trust for $505.35. Reginald L. and Ann Bullen for $19.15. And uh, CAB East LLC for $459.86. Motion to approve the tax refunds and the amount of $1,016.06. Motion's made. Second. Second. And any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Item two is to discuss an act on the donation policy as presented.
pleasure. Make a motion to accept the donation policy as presented. Okay. Second. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Item number three um, it's a draft for the check and cash policy. I did put that there. It was a uh, first reading as presented, so we don't have to actually act on it. Um, if you want to take it with you to review or anything that is written here, but uh, we would like to keep it in conjunction with, if you take a look at the, section, uh, the second session, I, I also added in revised accounting policy, which was about a year ago, February 14th, and that goes in conjunction with it. So if you want to use that to go back and forth, um, we don't need to take a motion on this tonight. We just uh, have it for a set meeting at the next meeting and we can make any modifications and changes. Item number four, first meeting again for the policy for alcohol and legal drugs as presented. Um, just to get a little background on this one. Um, this is something that we have for alcohol and legal drugs, but we also had a change with the state statutes allowing uh, for uh, modification of what is illegal and what is not illegal by way of marijuana. So we took a look at other towns and municipalities and what they have, and that's why we drafted it with basically combining the two. So um, again, as this is a first reading, um, we don't have to make any motions on this at this point. I would say that we can bring it to the next meeting, give you an opportunity to read through it and see if there's anything that needs to be modified or if there's any questions or concerns. So we can bypass on the get action on it. Um, item number five, which is discuss and act on the ARPA Small Business Economic Recovery Grant Program. This is the second round. And George, if you wouldn't mind, um, you did do some follow-up on this with the um, Economic Development Commission. Yes, yeah, so they've recommended approving um, a grant for Bubbles Laundry Spa. Um, previously, they had opted um, in the board had opted to award distinctive touch, however distinctive touch um, their process of selling. Um, so rather, um, we figured we'd give the other grant that the owner had applied for the bubbles, and they're going to use that for um, to buy some new machines and expand um, that way. Um, so I'm just requesting that you approve that. Tonight. And that's the full twenty-five thousand. Correct. Uh, just as a side note, your remaining balance at that point would be the forty-nine thousand three hundred. Correct. Okay. Correct. So there are still opportunities for other businesses. So, um, want to know what your pleasure is on this? There's also some background data on the other pages that show you what's been okay. approved or reviewed. Um, but we we're tossing that back and forth between the one owner of two of the businesses, but he is pulling back on his to touch. So this is bubbles laundry met an opportunity. I make a motion to approve Bubbles Laundry Spa LLC for the ARPA Small Business Econo Economic Recovery Grant for the amount of $25,000. Anything else in the motion? No, that's perfect. Motion's made. Second. Scott second. All in favor say aye. 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 While you're here, Jordan. Um, item number six on the agenda talks about the fair housing resolution to town Plainfield. Um, there's a whole process by which we have to do it on an annual basis. Right. We have to continue with this. So for fair housing, uh, this is basically the uh, resolution. It's a long one, uh, as they all are. But, but basically there's multiple packages in there talking about what the, um, and especially the back package, talking about what fair housing is and equal opportunity. So, um, it's your pleasure. Would you like to read the whole thing, or do you want to? No. Oh. All right. So uh, to shorten it down, there we're looking for um, discussion and act on reappointing Jordan Lumpkins as fair housing officer. The town of Plainfield via the resolution which you have in front of you. I make a motion to reappoint Jordan Lumpkins as fair housing officer for the town of Plainfield via resolution. Any other discussion? There we go. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Here we go with item number seven. Thank you, 
doing that. Um, item number seven discusses the um, discuss act on procurement of uh, police evidence shed engineering plans. Uh, you have in front of you what we had done to go out to different companies for engineering. And so, as is with most of the um, initial requests for companies to come back with some numbers for us, give us an idea if they're going to scale bill a bit or not. It's difficult uh, finding people just to even to do the work. Um, as you can see in here, four local, local companies uh, requested their information. Engineering construction was declined to offer any price at all boundaries, um, probably because of their, how busy they are. Uh, they decided that they didn't want to respond to the request. Uh, we have CLA engineers out of Norwood for 19,200 and Archer surveying LLC for 9,400. So um, it is the recommendation of our project supervisor, building inspector, to go forth with a 9,400 for the engineering plans for the police evidence shed. I have one question. <clears throat> Why the big difference in price? Because I only have CLA's bid here. I don't have Archer's. So I don't know why the $10,000 difference. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure. Archer comes from the area and he's the only cheaper. He's working the town a lot. That's usually what happens. Yeah, that's usually what happens when you have someone who's doing a lot of work for and is pounding as a thing. Because they get the volume of work that they're doing, they actually do a little, a little bit of pricing. Okay, so what is your pleasure at this time? Make a motion to approve Archer Survey in LLC for $9,400. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Um, you have now on number eight uh, the tie-in bond. And um, we are working with uh, George again for time bond to work forward with the number eight, which is discuss an act on return of bypass of proposal submitted by time bond for the environmental site assessment of Lions Park as an extension of the current contract. So because they already started the work on this, uh, tell me if I'm wrong in any of this, but um, this is an, an extension of that work. So basically, uh, DECD, because this is a steep funded program, what we have gone on Lions Park. They've asked that we defer to kind of bond um, because they've been working on the Anna Royal brownfield assessment. Um, so basically, uh, they said they're familiar with the project and the property, so uh, we would have to, basically they said we have to go with them. They've already done some of the work for this project already? Yeah, so it'll be an extension of their February 11th. Contracts, all the rates, everything are the same. This is just expanding into Lions Park now, um, especially because it's that sliver that um, is disputed from. And we hope to have some resolution on that soon. Yeah, they'll start tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I spoke to the clerk of the Superior Court uh, today, and they have all the information and the judgment that was passed down at the land long since time. And I also have to cancel the check. That judgment was in 1995. 1995. Yes, so they found it in the archives in Hartford. We brought it to the partner and I spoke to the guy today, and we're going to give all copies of everything. Okay. So the continuation is for the 15,000. That's why you see on the next page what the, what the continuation is. So, well, that was our request from from um, small town Steve yes. Brandy. Yeah. Any questions for Jordan? I do. Um, I assume this is coming out of the grant funds. Yes, yeah. Okay, because that wasn't budgeted. Uh, correct. Uh, it was budgeted. The overarching uh, project, so after we were awarded, we had to break down costs. It's over what was budgeted. Originally, we had 5000 because we didn't expect there to be much, to be as much of an issue. Um, so in the final, what we submit, because, I mean, it's just like, for example, the, uh, the fitness board, that's one lump sum that was budgeted. However, there's many components that go into that um, part of the overarching project. Okay. I didn't see any 
application. Gotcha. So, uh, and also any application, this property we're talking about, it's not listed as in the boundary on the map. What do you mean? On the map. What are you calling? session we're talking about? Yes. So when you have applied, you only applied for So that's because um, as we went through the process, we figured out that um, there needed to be storm water retention and, um, and other aspects of the park that did go into there. So all of the items we're purchasing, the playground, everything that's going to be done is going to be within the parcel you're talking about, mm -hmm. but there may be some work that needs to be done over and also, it's a, um, we're looking for five-year site plan approval. And in five years, rather than have to continuously go back to planning and zoning, we're just including anything that could possibly go in there within the next five years. Um, so we're just trying to do our due diligence. And all of this is in that section. What was that? All of this contamination, whatever they're looking for, is in that section. It's not, there's nothing in the park itself. So it's, um, they're going to look at the whole property um, just to make sure that Lions Park that also. Correct. Uh, correct. That wasn't the Yeah, they're doing sampling, so I thought the park just in case. and clinkers. What are, what are clinkers? Do you know? I could not tell you. Okay. Marion, do you know what clinkers are? I don't. It's in with the coal ash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's have to go with that one. Where do you see that? <clears throat> On page two. Uh oh, which section? Oh, tie and bond the, the proposal. Okay, right after the pricing? No. Yeah. Page two, yep. right at the top, second paragraph. Coal ash and clinkers was observed below paved surfaces. Clinkers are. They mentioned at the end that there's the potential that coal ash and clinkers were used as fill for the parking lot base. You see it? Yeah. Up top. Unburned coal. How is this unburned coal? Unburned, okay. So larger pieces. And it's crushed up and then it goes into a clint of hot water. Oh, very good. That's all my questions. for the procurement bypass for the proposal submitted to tie and bond for environmental site assessment at Lions Park as it is an extension of the current contract. Now make a motion to bypass the procurement policy hire a tie and bond for this environmental site assessment at Lions Park. Motion. I can second it. Any other discussion? I know there's a lot there. There's a, there's a lot there, which is why we're doing the, a site assessment. So there is one other question. If because they say three day turnover with the lab report, mm -hmm. what would is it a big difference in price if we went in the normal time 
Now, is there a reason for doing it? Quick. This is just the proposal that is submitted. They didn't give us an alternative. Oh, um, okay. But every, all the results will be in by April 7th. Right. It's, yeah, so it says three day turnover for the lab. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's an alternative option. Can I do a breakdown? So they have, um, I think it's on here, it's this is page four. So for if a letter of support comes out, it's for 2500 And then there's two other sections that are listed in there for um, a limited uh, site assessment and then a mark out of the area first. Yeah, basically DCD said in order to continue with the project, we need to do this first to make sure that environmentally it's all safe and we're not going to be disturbing it. Um, and they said, yeah, deferred to tie a bond for um, basically setting the scope familiar and um, as licensed LEPs, they, they have to, yeah, you know, they're able to guide us. And we were looking at other options too. We've worked with Martin Brogy in the past, but the, because the steep decided that this best way to go is to stay with time on, which makes sense. Any other questions? Just for a little bit of clarification, I think maybe the expedited time frame is um, because initially when the project was before the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, the commission, the, uh, the town had issued an extension of time to close the public hearing, thinking to April. And they want, the town wanted to have all the information for that April meeting. Right. So Tanya Bond was looking at April 7th as a, as a delivery date. We've since withdrawn, so it doesn't. I mean, there's not a great push for this, yeah. but we do want the data. We have a motion, I seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Stay. Stay. Okay, motion passes. Um, number nine. And this gets into the issue of, back to the procurement policy issue. Um, item 9 says discuss and act on town clerk's reception desk upgrades. Uh, the, the issue that we're looking to fix is that right now it's not an ADA compliant desk. So if someone comes in with a wheelchair, they go up to it, uh, it makes it very difficult for them to process. Um, what we had asked was to go out to look at someone giving us a bid price for putting us all together and making changes. Uh, there were a couple companies that were contacted. Um, Burt Custom Woodworking, no response. Uh, Burt Arts Woodworking, no response. Uh, fortunate thing for, the, for us is we have someone who's very adept into uh, woodworking and that's our town uh, building inspector Rick Martell. He decided he would at least draft it up so people knew what they were, what we wanted them to do. And he did a very detailed job of drafting everything up. So that you're, you're in your packet. He also gave a price with all of the um, materials that he need, um, and then we can have our staff do the removal. So uh, the total price that he put in was six thousand eight hundred eighty-one dollars. Again, this would be uh, the only bid we have on it. We've reached out to multiple companies and really didn't get anything back. So I wanted to know what your um, questions or concerns or you just wanted to go forward with it. I think that they will be starting if you uh, approve it. Once he gets to go then get the materials and then to plan out an appropriate date to, get it to do the work and start working on it. Not that it's really going to matter, but is it going to be maple? Like on this one, or is it going to be oak like in this plant? Um, I believe he was talking about the maple plywood. Okay. Because in the oak one, it's, I see part of board melamine. Yeah, there's a little of everything going on because it's behind the desk. Yeah, that's less quality. That's not, right? yeah. I know where it's working. What he has on the front sounds good. So, what is your pleasure with this? Accept 
bid from uh, Martel Woodworking for the clerk's recep reception desk for $6,881. And a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 For those who go into the town clerk's office, there's a lot of work going on there already. Um, they're doing the replacement for the cabinets that are at the far back. And that is being done um, hopefully over the next couple of weeks to start that so there'll be a lot of activity going on over there. All right, item number 10 is to discuss and act on proposal for authority for the Connecticut General Statute Section 82. Item 82. As a section E, any city, town, or borough which uh, adopts the provisions for this chapter made by a vote of legislative body exempt municipal property from the regulations prescribed by the zoning commission of such city, borough, or town, but unless it is so voted, municipality property shall be subject to such regulations. So, um, one of the biggest things we have, and that's why I wanted to discuss this earlier because I thought it would be nice just to be through. Um, is notes. just to share some of the notes. All right, so there are a lot of things that we're proposing for municipal projects um, requiring either special permits going to the Planning and Zoning Commission, anything small, playground equipment. That's the one that really got me to start off with. Um, having to go through planning and zoning if you want to change out a playground. Um, placing a pre-built uh, shed, uh, a garage, and um, it's usually waiting time. It's also the engineering cost, uh, going through all of that permitting for that. And you have to have it all drawn up. Uh, so like an example currently is the police department is uh, attempting to construct a garage. And that's going to be for their um, storage of evidence in the command center. That is kind of vital for them to store it because it won't continue to be out to the elements, but also the storage to be um, evidence. You, you have to go through, uh, right now, with, through the engineering site plan, um, and that's a lot of money, as you can see. The fees that cost, all we talked about tonight, you have engineering fees, which are going to be costing quite a bit of money through the whole process, whatever it might be. So it's, it really puts more burden on to the taxpayers because of that. Um, I, I just don't see that why we need to continue to do that process. Uh, I may be wrong, but that's something I think we can move forward with. Um, So if you pass this, it's just for municipal properties. So I, I get that. We have a lot of municipal properties, open space, schools, police department, town garage. So if you have no site plan, if you have no plan, how do you how do you move forward with the project? I don't know. I don't know. Kyle, what you say? You still have to get plans made up, drawn up. What is the stuff we can do in the house? We're not going to be uh, going past the setbacks and things like that. Is that what you're worried about? That we're going to be too close to somebody's property? No. No, I'm just worried that it's... That we're going to take the property building without a chance. Hey, hey, hey. According to this, 
these notes, I still don't understand why we would do this as a municipality. Do you know how many other municipalities to do this? No, I don't know how many go, but it's going to save a ton of money. The taxpayers, it's going to save the taxpayers a lot of money. Yeah, I get that. Okay. I get that. It, it, it may not, in the end, if, if the construction is not up to regulations, that's why zoning you have, regulations. That's why you have a building inspector verifying that what things are being done are done correctly. Can I, can I ask a question about this? And I know it's go back and forth on it, but can you name something else in the town of Plainfield that we actually went through planning and zoning for that is town municipal property in the past? Name one thing on the Alliance Park that we did. How about the police station? How about any other buildings that we had in the town of Plainfield? Have we done that? I can't answer that. I'm not sure. I'd have to really think about it. I'm I don't think sure. we have. I think the issue is we've done gone through with our building inspector to verify mm -hmm. everything's done and up to code. I mean, we haven't really done anything on our properties in years. So, well, it's hard to say. We, we put in playgrounds, basketball Playground, play, just. Saying playgrounds don't have any minutes. The site plan to put on a basketball court? To put on a playground? Did you submit a uh, site plan when you put a playground in your backyard? No. No. Like you put a basketball hoop in your driveway and you submit the site plan? No. So why should the town have to pay a penalty for recreation for one thing? It's the taxpayers that are paying it, it's coming out of their pocket. That's why the state so as a taxpayer you, now. That's why the state allows you to do that. As a taxpayer, taxpayers going to come in, playing zone. Well, why do I need a permit if the town doesn't? Because there's, you a, state, need a, permit. there's a state well, statute that, that allows us out. to get around. Right. You don't need a permit for that? Why is for it? I don't know why they do it. Well, the state gives us a statute that allows us an opportunity to bypass it. Mm -hmm. That's our answer. And that's to save money for the taxpayers. Because they're the one that, that are going to be paying it ultimately. It saves a ton of money. I don't think the state would allow people to do that if it was wrong. Yeah, I'd like to know how many towns do it. I really would. Okay. You got some statistics on that. That would be nice. And what would that change? Huh? Can I ask what would that change? Well, I... If 20 do it in 140 dollars does that change? I guess the reason. 140 don't. Well, there's, there's towns that do and towns that don't. I think that this, it's an opportunity because the state has a statute that allows us to, to opt out for that process. We still have to go through all of the inspections. Towns, who does it, and why? 
I'd like to see that. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that, that's fun. And, and also, I, I looked at, into this this weekend. And this John Rappa, he's the principal analyst, he did OLR research report for the, town, for the state of Connecticut. And he was asked questions. And people want to know if you can apply this retroactively. So now we already voted on police storage. Okay. And he says, according to 82H, you cannot. Right. So that would, that would not. Any proposed projects have to comply with zoning regulations that were in effect. And the other question I had, you can look into, you can look into that, 828, to see if that's, if this, this band's uh, report is legitimate or not. And, and also, would this have to go to town meeting, being the legislative body? We are the legislative body. According to the charter, the town is the legislative body. I would just agree with that, but that's okay. It doesn't say that. You were voting all night long for the legislative body. Mm -hmm. You were voting all night long. You are the legislative body. That's a strict legal definition of the legislative body. So to the town attorney for that. Which I can get you because we've already passed. That's a kind of gray area. To go to a town meeting, composition, Section 2.1, the legislative powers of the town shall be vested in the town meeting, except as otherwise provided in this chapter. B, the members of the town meeting shall be the electors of the town and all other persons entitled to vote at town meeting as provided by the general statutes. And the town meeting is called, see, the town meeting is called by the board of selectmen. Go to the board of selectmen. Our duties and responsibilities of the board of selectmen shall direct and supervise the affairs of the town and be responsible for coordinating the activities of the officers, boards, commissions, and other agencies of the town. The board of selectmen shall have all powers, duties, and responsibilities conferred upon it by this charter or the general statutes and all powers proper, incidental, or convenient to their exercise. In the ordinances. And there's so I don't know, it doesn't say we're the legislative body. It just, we do have Section five powers and duties powers to do. Section 5 duties by way of statutes, and there is legislative powers in there. Otherwise, everything we do right here, we should have a town meeting for every single item. Yeah, well, that's what I was looking forward to. I, that I actually didn't find a reason for a town meeting. So, um, other towns and why, section 82H, anything else? Okay. Do you want to make a motion to table then? That, that's fine. What do you, what do you want to do? I did find a survey that was done in 2002 about municipal zoning exemptions. 33 towns responded to it, and 15% of them took the exemption 21 years ago. 40%. 15% of them took the exemption out of the 33 that were that responded to the survey, and that was 21 years ago. So I'll try to get something more up to date, but that's what I just found. Four of the towns. What's that? About four of the towns. Five. Five, okay. East Granby, Enfield, Kent, Newington, Summers. That was in 2001. So I'll try to find some, oh, 2002. Just for a particular property, just for every municipal property. So it's, I don't know. It's kind of like a feeling of this tool again. You're asking me to actually make a motion. I'd be more inclined to make a motion to deny. Turn this out.
actually like somebody from the state to explain why they do this. Save the town's money. That's it. That's the only reason. That's and as to the projects. Just to um, clarify the legislative body question, uh, generally when the statutes speak to the legislative body shall whatever, um, that means town meeting, unless it specifies in whatever it's talking about, unless the legislative body is the town meeting, then it may be adopted by the representative legislative body board of selectmen, but it has to say that in whatever section you're, you're talking about. And could you give me an example of that by the next? Meeting? Yeah, absolutely. I can see the difference. Yeah. Seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 And I think that is it for our items for the agenda and the added. So <coughs> there's nothing else other than a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 745. We can jump right on into WPCA. Okay, so uh, I'd like to call this meeting for WPCA order on March 27th. Time is now 7.46. Roll call. All right.
Scott Berger. Item C to approve the minutes of WPCA meeting dated February 27th. Make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for February 27th, 2020. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Public comment. This is the time for the public to speak. If there's anything that you'd like to speak on. Hearing none, uh, going to new business. Item one for the new business discuss and approve purchase of asbestos removal of folks for the North Plant Boiler Room. So among many other things for the um, sewer plant, um, there is also some review of, uh, of OSHA's coming in and taking a look at some things. This is one of the things they mentioned to us is you may have asbestos in your boiler. For those who remember from years ago, if your boiler has a open door section to it, you usually had a rope caulking that went around it, made of asbestos. So that's why we need to review what's going on. Um, we went out to see if there's any companies that were interested in giving us some numbers. What you have in front of you again is the one of the companies is for Yankee Fiber Control for five thousand six hundred and seventy-five dollars. And then you also had um four asked. Uh, the other one was Ramco Environmental Inc. for seventy one hundred dollars. Uh, Michael R. Major Company had no response and the action asbestos not interested in getting a quote. So with that, um, our low bidder would be the asbestos removal for the North Plant Boiler Room from Yankee Fiber Control for $5,675. Motion to approve. The bid of Yankee Fiber Control for $5,675. Motions? Oh, Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And the, the larger of the two, which is going to be a little more involved, is item number two, discuss an act on clean water fund application by authorizing a resolution which is required to obtain clean water fund financing of, of water pollution abatement facilities. You'll see that there is the resolution in there for this. Um, we still need to go forward with a, a, a few other things. There's paperwork in there talking about where there's your uh, list of selectmen, um, the resolution to obtain the Clean Water Fund, certification by the town clerk, and um, I'm going to get deep just talking about the Clean Water Fund a memorandum of its purpose, uh, its regulation with Faith Act, and so forth. We have more to add to this as well, so I'm going to do that right now. Kelly? Um, what we need to do tonight is to, uh, the Water Pollution Control Authority needs to uh, set a date and send it to a public hearing and then a special meeting afterwards. So at the public hearing we can discuss what this Clean Water Fund is. Um, I know it's a part, it's a grant, and part it's a bond. So how that will all play out and then have a meeting on it to send it to the Board of Selectmen then um, to set up the resolution for Clean Water Fund. We have to start here. Yeah, we have to start here and set a date. And then we have a calendar for every date that we have to There's a step along yeah. the way. Yeah. Um, I did follow up with um, Glenn after this, just yep. to make sure I knew in my mind exactly what it had to be. Yep. Um, the statute is 7-247A. Uh, Yep. And it talks about um, a notice in the place of purpose for not to be uh, mailed no later than 15 days before the date. But that's only if you have acquisition of property. or So that's not required as a 10-day wait. Similar to what we do right now before we go out to town meeting. So that Act uh, 247A is the starting point here in your, in your paper that I passed out earlier. It's actually, instead of saying 331, it's actually today's date 327. We'll meet tomorrow as a uh, couple of members of the town will meet, put together the actual legal notice which goes into the paper. Yeah. Um, and then from there... Um, and you have a special meeting yeah, right we after We have a whole bunch of special meetings to go. Uh, we plan to have the PCA meeting tonight to do that. Um, putting the knowledge bulletin for the announcement. And hopefully we'll get that in there within Friday. Um, that gives us a 10 days uh, public meeting 
we have a notice of the public meeting, and we go to the public meeting adjourning to WPCA special meeting. So we have a bunch of things going on the same night. It'll be WPCA public hearing, and then a special meeting. Then move us forward to the board of selectmen, which will also meet that night. And we approve the, uh, the you know, minor approved recommendation of the appropriation for the issuance of the bonds or bans. Uh, and then before that, to the board of finance. And then we refer as well to the PNC meeting on 411. Uh, then we set a special town meeting day for referendum pending approval from the Board of Finance and Community. But uh, you can see the calendar listed there for it, for all of that. Um, I just checked with Amy, said so far it sounds good. Um, we have the 419-23 Board of Finance meeting, approves it and goes forward. Gives us a five-day notification at that point. Special town meeting would be on 425 with a review of the resolution and adjourn to referendum. Um, the reason why this is WPCA to start with is because it is for the sewer, but the reason why we go to referendum, it's a town approval for that to go forward. So um, it gives us a full you know, 10, 14 days to a referendum. We're trying to, I asked him tonight about this as well. Um, if we have the initial, um, normally we have our budget hearing for the town for May 1st. We just don't want people to be confused about what we're doing. So. Uh, we do have a uh, two-week window to do that normally, so um, I ask if it's okay to go to May 15th, um, which is uh, or at a little right around that point. So he said, fine, special time meeting at 425. So we have to start it off, and also long, but we have to start it off, and what we do is... Um, public hearing. Public hearing. Public hearing, hearing in a special meeting. So that public hearing, let's make sure we get the dates correct. Okay. Okay, April 10th is, happens to be also our select meeting. So it's not a uh, Do it earlier. It's not a what, yeah, we, yeah. Actually, we do it later okay. for the select because it gives us time for the public meeting. Okay. Um, it gives us time then to uh, allow us to forward this over to PNC and also to the um, uh, board of Finance, and we voted to that going forward. So we have this public meeting on the 10th for the sewer project, and then we can, uh, so following the public hearing, we then uh, meet as WPCA to authorize uh, a special meeting to approve the project. Um, because it's also over $50,000 easily, uh, just so you know that we're looking at quite a bit of money for or roughly how much? Four million. Four million is what we oh, have two. to get a bond anticipating note for, but that's yeah. not how much we're going to finance. We'll probably end up finding, financing three point two million so, through the Connecticut Clean Water Fund. Just to clarify, a, a ban or a bond anticipating note is a temporary loan that you take out. They call it a ban, and then that gets you the opportunity to then find the financing portion of it via a. Um, uh, going out to uh, a regular, uh, referring to going to a, um, a bond. A bond. But you're going to just use clean water fund instead of going out to the market to get a bond. Clean water fund already accepted our project, so we just have to follow the proper paperwork and um, start it, start the process. And just to fill in little pieces of that, also when you go out to loan right now, if you were going to a loan, your interest rates are up there. So this gives us an opportunity, hopefully the interest rates will start dropping off. But in the meantime, the good things are um, what we have in reserve funds right now is healthy. That's one of the things they look at. They look at your bond rating, they'll be looking at it again here through this process. So um, while it doesn't look promising for the interest rates, it does look promising for the town because we are in a good position. So, so what we have to do in, tonight, if you want to go forward with this, we have to set a date for the public hearing, and I would say that the uh, setting a date for um, application for the Clean Water Fund financing uh, through the abatement facilities would be for April 10th. So that's all you need for the motion for the yep. public hearing? Public hearing and special meeting. Yep. And that same special meeting yeah. that same night? Same night. Okay. For WPCA. Yes. yes. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we so the public hearing for the Clean Water Fund financing for 
April 10, 2023, and also a special water pollution control meeting for April 10, 2023. Amen. And I was going to say, um, um, if we do the April 10th public hearing, we can always move the board select them out. So I would say 7 o'clock is usually the time everybody gets. 7 o'clock. So 7 p.m. for the special. And then immediately following four hours, WPCA special meeting. I would set a date for your board of select yes. meeting yeah. because we can't, you know, it has to be like official, so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would also say that our April 10th normal board of select meeting, we could modify the move further out, like, I don't know, 8 o'clock. So for you, or you can make it the next day, as long as we make it so that we can actually act on it before we go to the next step. Could you do a special meeting like at 6 o'clock and then do your board of selectmen at 7 like you normally have it? So the problem with going at 6 o'clock for these types of public hearings, yep. not everybody can get here. That's why they okay. usually have them at 7 o'clock. Okay. It gives it a fair opportunity for everybody to get here. Okay. We can always change around the board of select meeting. That's, you know, do a cancellation with a special meeting after. Do you care where the water pollution control is? We have it? to name it to the set. Is a community app. No. When? Oh. Can, can we have it at like we do after the board select meeting? Well, you have to specify a time. Just specify a time. Right. Because our bond council last time I went to financing for the 5.5 million for WPCA. We used to use that after, but it's not like an official legal time like you should have a time set right. and that's when the meeting starts and that's when you can so, vote on it how long how long will this public hearing take? half an hour yeah probably half an hour okay so i'll, I'll amend my motion i'll make a motion to set the public hearing for the clean water fund financing for april 10th 2023 at seven o'clock i also make a motion to set our Board of Selectmen meeting for April 10th, 2023 at 7.45 okay. with the water pollution control immediately following. Here at the community app. That makes sense? That gives you 45 minutes. Does the immediate following have a problem? You just have to have like a WPCA public hearing into a special meeting, WPCA. Okay. You can adjourn that and then have your board selected. Yeah, I would say from 7 yep. to 7.30 would be our, our uh, public hearing. And then at 7.30, we would schedule the special WPCA meeting. And then our board selection to immediately follow that. Let me amend my motion. That's fine. Make a motion to set the public hearing for April 10th, 2023, at 7 o'clock, and to set the Water Pollution Control Authority meeting at 730. 7.30, with the Board of Selectmen meeting immediately following that. All of the eight community app. Yeah, eight community app. Okay, I think that works. And I second. You have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We have to be very careful as we follow through this calendar, but um, I think part of that WPCA special meeting and then also for the board of selectmen, we need to push these forward so that the um, P and Z has an opportunity to review it, and also for the um, board of finance to review it. And at that point, we set the meeting for the town meeting to go sorry, to the referendum because that's how we put the process out. Just so we know, Kelly, for public information, uh, we have a highlights of what we're doing. I know Stephanie was trying to get here tonight. But yeah, yeah, we have um, a, a spreadsheet from Stephanie itemizing what the two. The two projects are going to be a North Plant generator replacement and a secondary clarifier project. So two clarifiers, and they're new instead of refurbishing them. So then we're hoping um, the last much longer than yeah and they'll prove you know the orientation and everything of the sludge that's cool. yeah 
I'm happy about that. Yeah. I'd ask that. So it might, you know, you might see a savings. they can do the new ones. Yeah. yeah. That's our plan. So. As they said they had cracks in the concrete and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. All right. With that, uh, no other items on the agenda. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 It's 801. Thank you.